Greetings and welcome to the fourth in the Mendez Soho series of occasional salons featuring artists, collectors, friends, and interesting people. I launched the Mendez Soho in 2013 as a website only to memorialize my late husband's artistic legacy. In 2015, I expanded the platform to embrace the salon concept in memory of the many art gatherings and charity events that Lewis and I hosted here and elsewhere over the years. Now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce today's guest of honor, Sarah Garden Armstrong. She will be talking about her recent site-specific commissions, the elaborate planning and construction processes involved in creating these monumental installations, and her vision of transforming scientific concepts into art. Without further ado, please welcome Sarah Garden Art. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's really fun to be here and talking. Um, just, well, I'll just say before I go much further is you'll, you'll hear just a little bit of a southern accent, but that I'm from Alabama. I moved up here in 1982, so it just stayed with me. Uh, <laughs> my work ranges from atrium commissions, drawings, paintings, to small artist books. So it, uh, and it fo focuses on changing organic systems. Uh, this last year, I was selected to participate in a, the call project, and what that means is creating a living legacy. And uh, it is a, I was selected from Space 111, sort of a really wonderful organization in Alabama, and it is funded and sponsored by the Joan Mitchell Foundation here. And uh, artists uh, come into your studio, archive your work, and you are, it's, it's really what is amazing is you're looking at this whole body of work. And it has made me think about as we look at our artwork and we think what we're doing at, the, at this moment is like the most important piece. It is going to be the best thing I ever did. Uh, I'm not so sure. Maybe it's that whole range of work of the looking back and forwards and maybe it's the essence of the body of work. So uh, I have been able to appreciate this in, I think, a different way because of this, uh, doing this call project. Uh, but today I'm talking about these two recent uh, atrium commissions, uh, Sentient Matrix and uh, Desir Aspire, Tend to Breathe. And um, I will start with this one over here. Uh, it, is, it was a commission by United Therapeutics Corporation in Silver Springs, Maryland. And that, it, it is a um, biotech company, and it, is, it focuses in on unmet um, pulmonary diseases that are very life-threatening. And so this was for their home office, their opening of this very expansive building, and uh, they wanted, they, uh, wanted the commission to be a related uh, uh, bronchi lungs, and that was the commission I was given to do with this. Um, and so I'm going to start it's this piece right here. And um, so with beginning, oh, before I go with that, I just want to say um, this last, it was in 2012 that this piece was um, installed, and it was probably one of my hardest pieces. Actually, both of these have been pretty difficult. And I've dealt with breathing uh, for a very long time, but this piece was to breathe continuously every day from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. And that is a wear and tear on. It had to be fireproof, it had to be permanent. And all of my previous installations, that was never a factor. So that was somewhat, and um, I also had to give the company a warranty. I have never given a warranty on a piece of artwork before. And uh, they wanted five years. We finally got down to two years and in this discussion. But when I was there in November, it looked like it had just been installed. So I felt really great. That was, <laughs> I, that, because 
you know, again, it's very difficult to test a piece of work. Uh, how is it going to last when you have never done that before? You don't know what it is, okay? What did you have to warranty? What? I had to warranty that this piece would breathe and it, it would be in the shape that it, I installed it. And if not, I would come and repair it and make it exactly like it was before. So that was, that was for me scary. But, uh, <laughs> but okay, so let's go back to the sort of the piece and begin talking about that. Uh, I always work with a model first, not with materials. Um, I have to sort of discover and um, what is it I'm trying to do. I have to also think about what's the space like? Uh, how, is the, how is my work going to fit in? What am I trying to say? So the model is a place for me to sort of explore. Now, before I go any further, I should also say both of these pieces were based on science. And so I had to take a piece of si a science concept and also translate it into art. But it, had to, it, it always referenced the science. Uh, I do not really have a science background, but I have always loved science. And I love, and my work is very, has always been very organic and, and relating to it. So um, it ne I never thought about not translating a science concept. I just, that was you just move on with the problem. Okay. Um, so with this, I ended up, I was saying I built a model, and um, I ended up having, because the piece, this piece here is 40 feet long, uh, and I always work an inch to the foot because in that way I can um, build from a model that's this size, I can blow it up to the, the size that it should be. And uh, it's, it's been an easy way for me to work for many years. Um, but with this, I had to just build a certain area but, and use my studio for the sight lines because uh, it, you know, it goes a huge, a, a lot more distance from here there. Um, Okay, so with that, there is the process I do is always research, the model, and then I go from there trying to get the parts and understanding what all of these pieces, what the materials are going to be. Um, so eventually what I did with this, I've, okay, I'm first building the model. Um, I'm treating these shapes. I'm not really dealing with the breathing. Um, that is for me comes later, um, but I am treating it with this forms moving through the space. And then, uh, and it is also a, a very much of a discovery as I go along. Um, how, as you solve one problem, you go to the next problem, and it sort of leads you on. And uh, with this, I use a stretch, I finally had to use a stretch. Uh, fabric that it was a theater because with theater everything has to be fireproof and uh, oh I must say with this piece it was a very tight schedule it was <laughs> they wanted it before it was built you know so it was for the opening of this building and um, so this piece when you notice over here it was actually built in an apartment space I tried to look for space there was no time. It was built in a little, I had more time ahead of, but the, when we signed the contract in the December, it was installed the end of March. So uh, that, was, <laughs> that, was, that was tight. This one took a year and a half. So we, <laughs> but you know, you do what you need. So it was, it was just, that's the way it was. So the apartment furniture was moved out down to the neighbors and, um, you know, every space was used. You would get up in the morning out of the bed and phone call goes there and that was, and we actually have Sonia Hung, who is an assistant with me, then an artist, uh, is, is right here and you can see her pictures in there. But let me keep going with that. Um, okay, so I, you know, the model was done with a, a, a very light color and it, you can see in here it was in here, this was the model. And like, 
what was the color going to be? You know, and you're constantly trying to think as you, you know, every minute you're trying to think. And I'm on the subway, I live in Queens, so everybody looks different. And, I, um, and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, look, I'm having my iPhone in my hands, and all of a sudden I realize, we'll do, the, we'll do all of our hands. So my team was, Sanyu is from Taiwan, another artist was from Hong Kong, um, the seamstress was from Ecuador, and uh, an engineer from Queens, and we, you know, and a Peruvian. So we, we just, you know, this is, we photograph hands. So it was the colors of skins were on the outside of uh, here is what this is right here. I'll try not to trip. Uh, <laughs> so that was, again, I try to layer as the work goes on, it sort of continues to get layered with, with thoughts about, uh, and try to make it a richer piece. Um, then, uh, okay, so the interior bags, and you can see this bag right here, uh, those were made out of ripstop nylon. Those were the bags, the breathing. And at first they were on the exterior, then the interior. And um, eventually, I have a, a painting background. I've never been able to be, stay flat, but um, I realized with a lot of my sculpture, it is drawing in space. And so this piece and this, but this one for me became the lines of the stainless steel exterior with the lines of the hoses, with the lines of the bag, became very much of a, a drawing, a breathing drawing in space. And um, with that. And uh, so it's, and afterwards, if it's OK, we'll, I'd love to ask any, answer any questions about process, but we'll sort of um, move on to the next piece. OK, this is Sentient Matrix. And this was commissioned by the uh, National a multiple cirrhosis society, Alabama, Mississippi chapter. And they honored a um, Mr. Miller Gorey with this piece. And he was able, he selected the artist, and he also selected what it was going to be about. And he wanted something about multiple cirrhosis. And uh, so this was the first time in the long series that someone had asked for that, for the, uh, the sculpture or the art to relate. And I had to, you know, I had to learn about multiple cirrhosis. I, you know, it was at first, the, my studio looked like a science lab. It was, and I had a wonderful uh, doctor, Dr. Tara DeSivero, who was in, dealt with uh, research on multiple cirrhosis. And, she was this amazing person with helping me to understand. But I went on and on and on, and, I prob and eventually I realized I had to stop. You know, this was an art project, an uh, art piece, and I had to sort of back up and think, now what are the essences that I have to talk about? And what is, what is that going to be about? And uh, so eventually what I did was that the, I dealt with the things that I felt were essential here. The neurons, the movement of light, which was going to indicate um, the uh, nerve impulse moving. And these are represent a sort of glia cells. Those are the ones that are going to say, that are wrapping the myelin. And uh, for me, that was going to be, that became the linear drawing in space that was holding it. And I think I said, this is an abstraction of a brain with a sort of root spine of sort of feeding it coming in. And um, I made a model for this. And again, it was a model without materials. So this was harder because what was I going, how was this going to be built? Um, all right. So. And the model was approved and accepted, and because uh, usually with a commission, you have to show something along the way that is, you know, this is what I'm doing. Um, and uh, then it, I took several months of working with materials. And so I'll just tell you a few things, but I knew I had to have light 
Light was going, light was essential with this piece. I had never dealt with light moving through a piece before. And, but I had to. So I started with theater people and trying to think about light in there. And it went endlessly talking and interviewing and talking to people. I finally got down to tech. So then I started studying LEDs. And I organized that. And I was tremendously lost. And <laughs> beyond lost. And uh, then I finally got, there was a company here in uh, town here, and it, there was no people to talk to. You couldn't pick up the phone and speak to you, only did the internet. But I realized they had a bulletin board. And so I put on the bulletin board, I put a, the model in sort of what I had shown the people before to get the model approved, and I you know, asked for, to have anyone to help. Bob, right back, Medicia, right back there, uh, answered me very quickly. And he came out. We talked about everything. It was like, you know, heaven thing. And, and then we started all of our problems that we were going to have to tackle. But they were tackable uh, by, at that point in time. And you can see, so everything, you know, with this piece, the LEDs, they, it's all coded and, and um, programmed and tried many different controllers and, <laughs> and you know, but, and we did it. I built this one in Birmingham. And uh, so space was a much better, but Bob was in New York. So we had many conversations over the phone with, now what is it I'm supposed to do now? <laughs> but it, but it, was, it, it worked, okay. Um, the, um, the, some of the next things that were really difficult, what were the, these neurons to be out of? And um, eventually what I came up with after a lot of experimentation is paper fiber. I've worked with paper for many years, but I don't know why it took a long time to get around to it. This, and so they are sprayed abaca paper. And over here in the model, you'll see sometime when you come up here, the forms of where they were sprayed. Abaca is a banana leaf plant. And it also has a cozo fiber in it that for me was just sort of a, a cozo is a mulberry bark and it is a long thin fiber and it, um, it, it represents the, the systems, the blood systems and all of that, the organicness and in that. Um, then the next thing which was so difficult uh, was the um, glia cells in the model here, the model, that's the glue gun. You know, it's hard to go, how do you go from a glue gun to something translucent and very organic? And uh, eventually what I did there was I used gel medium, and gel medium is what binds acrylic paint. The paint. And so it is layers and layers and layers and layers of gel medium on glass. And then with, after that, it has also the cozo fiber because it gives it a fiber. And then it has a um, aluminum gessoed wire in there. And then that was then eventually wrapped around um, stainless steel tubing uh, structures that these glia cells formed out. And I, you can see all of that in there. Um, but so this. Um, Something else that with that, let's see, I sort of have to get where I am. Um, this, there's some other things about that happen with a piece, with doing work like this, is that you have a team of associates, and they become very important because everyone is part, and everyone does something, and everyone gives something. And so I haven't, there are lots of people in both of these that are really, just essential pieces, people to the work. And uh, so you'll have to check those people out too, but, but it's, it's a wonderful part of it. Now, a little bit more about this one piece, this sentient matrix, is that installing it, because of the electronics, the connections all had to be just right. Here, uh, this piece, if it were moved three inches or a foot another direction, that was okay but not with this piece. So within, in the hanging was, uh, wires were hung from the ceiling, and so that everything you had, it had to really fit and connect with that. 
So uh, it wasn't one of those easier pieces to install. There's a little video over here on that shelf, and it's about installing and the finished piece. Because another thing, the light moving through is, is one of the major things in this piece of sculpture. Um, something else that, so I, after I've installed this piece, I have a um, beater. Oh, I forgot to mention that. With this, there was a lot, of, I had to have a lot of pulp. So I ended up getting a beater for the fiber from a beater from New Zealand. So, you know, you have to figure these things out. So it's, again, it's just endless, endless things to get solved and do, which is actually wonderful. Um, the, uh, so now I have a beater, I have lots of pulp, I have lots of pigments for pulp. And so that pretty much led to, Shannon, will you just pick over there and hold right there that piece there and just hold that out. So I've been doing now a lot of these sort of pigmented paper um, fiber canvases. And, uh, and for me, what they're doing is um, they are layered. They are, um, they sort of have a history, a present and past. They are layers of skin, they are layers of earth, and they're called layered earth series. And um, they sort of make this looking back and forward, uh, which I, I'm very much involved with, uh, as an extension of all these that, things that have happened. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.